Today on Wardens, we visit some of Montana's most frequently visited waterways, including Flathead Lake, the Blackfoot, and Yellowstone Rivers. Throw alcohol into the mix and you're bound to have some interesting encounters. Oh, you're gonna drown? She goes down, I got the camera. You get her, you got shorts on. Add the risk of forest fires, and now you have an explosive situation. I actually stopped filming. Now I saw you fishing. That's all happening right now on Wardens. The pristine waters of Montana offer many recreational opportunities, and Montana game wardens have jurisdiction in 54 state parks. The biggest thing we look on here is the uh, glass. Glass on the rocks, there's no glass bottles and containers allowed out here. So. Yeah, last year there were some guys that were down here and they, I just, um, they had a whole case of glass bottles. And I was talking to them a little bit and said, well, you guys can swim before. They said, oh, well, no, we'll leave. I said, you don't have to leave, you can go swim and just, we'll just get rid of the beer. And they just said, uh, well, no, we wanted to drink for us before we got in, because it's cold. So. How's it going? Good. Broken glass on the rocky shores lead to frequent serious injuries. Warden Nathan Reiner and Parks Warden Brian Schwartz are on the lookout for glass containers. Good. Got any, just checking, you got any glass in the cooler? Yeah. You have glass bottles in the cooler? Okay. Well, um, they're not supposed to be down on the rocks here. That's what, that's what we're checking for right now because people drop it and then they leave it. Operation H2O takes place in Region 1 on Flathead Lake, just south of Kalispell, Montana. Uh, Brian's a new park warden, and uh, it's a new program, and they're getting trained with the, in the, the game warden, Montana game warden FTO program. All the glass, can you just, you don't, you guys don't have to leave, but can you just take it back to your car? Yeah, I appreciate that. Just so it's back there, because then if you have it, then other people have to see it and do it. Yeah. No, you got to get them back to the car. All right. Thank you. Right in that. Oh, really? I think it's because they walk right by a sign. Oh, okay. Sometimes I didn't even see the one that he had out, so Sometimes until afterwards. The, uh, you know, where they came in from, you know, because they may say they came in from the campground and they'll say, oh, we came up you know, right over there by the vault ramp, mm -hmm. right by the sign there. Yeah, well, and they come from the campground. There's this, there's the trail there. It's got a sign on there too. So, okay. But next time. All right. And so he's in right now. He's in uh, step uh, four of the program, which means he does uh, primarily anywhere from like 75 to 95 of the percent of the contacts. So I'm letting him do most of the most of the contacts, and and I'm just kind of observing and uh, and helping him out when I can. And... 450 miles to the southeast in Region 5, Warden Kevin Holland deals with urban issues in Billings. Billings is the largest city in the state. A lot of people come here. We have a lot of transient people come through here. A lot of people show up from uh, Wyoming and Canada. You know, they want to come shopping in the big city. Every weekend, every day I'm working here, I arrest, I arrest somebody on an arrest warrant. We just got a call of uh, a person up at Lake Elmo State Park on the beach with a case of beer. And Lake Elmo State Park is one of the few state parks where we do not allow any alcohol in the state park. The reason we do not allow any alcohol is we're in the city limits of Billings, and Billings does not allow alcohol in any of their parks. Uh, we have adopted that rule for two reasons. One reason, we get a better cooperative uh, cooperation from the city PD because our rules are in compliance with theirs. Uh, also, when we uh, got rid of all the alcohol, 
for Lake Elmo about five years, six years ago, the problems we had up there went down dramatically. We had a, a, a large decrease in issues. So we're looking for a guy in a white tank top. The laws here that are our primary concern, one of them is no alcohol and the other one is no glass. And there's so many people here, we just can't afford to have glass containers. People being people. This is part of urban, being an urban game warden. Where are we at? See our orange chair down here on the other side of the sidewalk? Yes. The there he's drinking a beer now. <laughs> yeah. There he was. There's a whole down case. Okay. He walked clear across the okay. beach with it. And I'm like. Well, we'll get a videotape of it for evidence and then we'll go down and talk to him. I see there's a gal there, two guys. They got a little boy with them. Yeah, so. they do got a few things. Okay. Well, we'll take it from here. It's underneath the towel. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. People do funny things when under the influence of alcohol. No, Please. you're gonna drown. I don't want to come no, in and get. I'm not gonna it's drown. not gonna be two for two. I don't want to get two people in two days. <laughs> I gotta go in the grass where we're at behind the street. Yeah, leave your purse here. You don't need your purse to pee. Alcohol and glass containers are forbidden at Lake Elmo State Park in Billings, Montana. Warden Kevin Holland will be assisted by Matt Ladd and both of these guys have discovered the dangerous combination while on patrol. Hey Matt, how you doing? Yeah, see this gal over here? Uh, there's a gal sitting in an orange chair, got blonde hair. Uh, her, I'm guessing maybe husband, he's got a white shirt. Yeah, he's, he was drinking and I think she may have been, I'm not sure, but we'll just get down and talk to him. There's two guys, two gals in that young shirt. So let's go see what we got. Hello, hello. How you guys doing? That's yeah, good. What's that? I'm not drinking. <laughs> and why would you think we would ask about that? Because we heard about the That's right. I saw you drinking. I saw your husband, boyfriend, somebody. He's the friend. So I, I saw I saw him sitting there drinking before he came down. So do you have any more beer here? I guess there's some under the towels. Well, we're going to take that as evidence, and the two gentlemen are going to get tickets for drinking alcohol. I didn't see you guys drank, so, you know. What's his name? Okay. Warden Kevin Holland leads this operation. He's been with Montana's Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Law Enforcement Division for 24 years and works in Region 5. Hey, how you doing? How you, sir? Good. Kevin Holland, game warden. Yeah. Uh, I saw you and your other partner there drinking some beer. And we were. Can't have can't have bottles in here and you can't have oh, beer okay. in here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to seize the beer and we're going to give both you guys tickets for okay. having beer. Sure, okay. You got your driver's license or photo ID or something around? I have it in for car. Okay. Yeah. He, he's okay, the little fellow down there? Yeah, I have him on. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick it. Yeah, we'll get there school. Um, and you live a block or two away? Oh, well, let's wait a second. I'll let my partner take care of. You want to take care of this guy? Let's uh, grab all your beer. Oh yeah, sure. That one's mostly full. Is there any more around here? Out, I get up on the grass. Bye, you know. Okay, which way are we going? This way or that way? That, that way? way? Okay. Bye, you know, I'll, I'll put this in my truck. I'll bring it with you. Fifty miles to the northwest in Region 2, Warden Aaron Berg's district includes the Blackfoot River in the Missoula area. 
The Blackfoot River Recreation Corridor is known for lots of inner tube recreation and raft type floating recreation along with fishing recreation. Warden Berg keeps a watchful eye from an ideal vantage point. He's monitoring recreationalists floating down the river. Witnessing several fishing poles and at least one person casting, he steps out to ask a few questions. How's the float going? Very good. You do, and they're all going to get ice cream cone coupons for having their life jacket on. Yeah, I appreciate you having them on, all the kids. That's really great. So who all has a fishing license I need to look at? I saw you fishing. Yep. and I. I no, I watched you holding the fishing no, pole. I, didn't have I saw. I was fishing. Yep, and then the fella to your right with the sunglasses. I saw fishing as well. I wasn't fishing. Ma'am, I saw you fishing. No. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. I wasn't fishing. Ma'am, I saw you fishing. No, look at your tape. I was not fishing. I'm dead serious. Look at your tape. I've not had a fishing pole this whole trip. She doesn't fish, pal. I, it was not me. I'm serious. Rewind that tape and look at it. It was, I a, had, I it was a paddle, huh? Yeah. That's it. No, it, it was a fishing pole. No. Yeah, no, it, was. it wasn't. Look at your tape. Hey, man. How are you? Thank you, sir. Uh, there might be a tag. Is that your ID? Yeah, that's one of my old ones. Old ones? Yeah. Okay. You still at 4450 Buttercup? Do you have a driver's license? Yes, I okay. do. Sounds good. Thanks, Ronnie. Yep. Appreciate it. I didn't bring my wallet. Why not? Okay, you have to have your license on you. You know that, I'm sure. Um, it's not a huge deal as long as you have a license. Okay. Do you got yours on you, man? I can't find my license. But I do have. Do you have your ID? Yeah. Let me see it. Okay, guys, I saw her fishing. Um, I mean, I don't know why the clan. Does have I don't know why the clan has to lie to me. I watched her with a fishing pole. I sat. Th I've been sitting there since you guys rounded the bend. I even watched you guys up around the bend. Well, somebody from back there was casting. That was me. And you don't have any ID. Okay. What's your name and date of birth? What's your middle what's your middle initial? Do you happen to remember your ALS number, you know, the dash whatever after your birth date on the top of your license, either of you? Mine's dash one. It's dash one? Yep. Warden Aaron Berg leads this operation. He's been with the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Law Enforcement Division for eight years and works in Region 2. She does have a license though? Yeah. Okay. But she was an official. Okay. Melissa? Yeah. Is that your wife? Or? Yeah, she's my wife. And what's her middle initial? M. M? Shoot. And uh, do you know her date of birth by chance? Um, July 3rd, 79. Oh, just had a birthday, huh? Yeah. So did you, man. Okay, just sit tight for just a second, okay? Okay. Okay. her fishing. I don't know why they'd argue it if she's got a fishing license. It's not a big deal. Second is also going to be on a Montana mail. Warden Berg runs a check on this group. No warrants are found and they all have valid fishing licenses. I could have swore I saw a fishing pole in her hand. I was right next to me. I was right next to me. Oh, and it could have been because the raft was in front of you. Yeah, exactly. Not that it matters because you have a license anyway. Okay. I really was. 
Thanks okay. Ice cream. Yeah, you bet, man. You. I won't hold you up any longer. Take care. Okay. Are we gonna be on TV? You might be. Right <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Three hundred and fifty miles to the southeast in Billings, Montana, Warden Kevin Holland has just issued a ticket at Lake Elmo State Park. We know that when people drink and they're on water, accidents happen. Later that afternoon, Holland makes his way to a fishing access site on the Yellowstone River that is closed due to high water and flooding. Get a picture of this up here. There's somebody sitting in that car and the door's open and the passenger driver's side. The site is closed. I don't know what they're doing in here. But we're going to see what this person's up to. Why are they sitting here? High water due to heavy snows, an unseasonably warm spring, and a disastrous oil spill near Billings, Montana have closed most state-owned fishing access sites. Warden Kevin Holland has just rolled up on a parked car in a closed area. Hello. Approaching the unknown, wardens have I'm to always yourself? keep their guard up. That's good. What are you up to today? Just came to soak in the river. Soak in the river? Okay. Well, the site is closed. You're not really supposed to be going in here. Well, before the, before the tape. Before the tape. Well, it's only, it's only that deep before the tape. You're not going to soak. Okay. Yeah. You're going to soak in that much water, huh? Okay. Uh, can I ask where you live? In Valentine. Okay. You gonna be okay to drive home? Oh yeah. You sure? Well, I got somebody coming to get me. That's good. Who is it? Let me call and make sure they're gonna be here because I don't want to see you driving home drunk. I see you got a couple empties here. Go ahead and hit read down and I'll talk to them. Hi. Yeah, this is Kevin Holland. Who's this? I just said, my name's Kevin Holland. Are you, uh, you gonna come on out and get this person? Are you okay to come out here, or, or have you been drinking this afternoon? I don't know what's going on. Well, nothing's going on. I just need somebody to come pick her up. She's been drinking, and I don't want her driving. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my I can't call somebody else. Maybe we better call somebody else. How about if we do that? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, we better call somebody else. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. You you just stay where you are and you have a good afternoon. We'll, we'll get somebody else to get her home. Okay. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> what are you saying? He's, he, he, he doesn't know what he's saying. He's too drunk to hardly say anything. He doesn't know what's going on. You better try somebody else. 450 miles to the northwest in Region 1, Warden Nathan Reiner is working on Flathead Lake. This is Cedar Island. The one on the left, it's owned uh, by the state. It's actually, at this point, it's still a uh, uh, wildlife management area. It's uh, managed by the Wildlife Bureau of the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. People can camp on it, but they can't have any fires because we're worried about, you know, as you guys can see, it's a thick, dense island, and if, if, it, were to, if it were to start a fire, it'd, it'd be gone. So, so we got some reports that there was somebody camping that had some firewood stacked up, so we're just gonna go see if they have a fire going, and they chat with them to, to tell them, make sure they know the rules of no fire. Warden Nathan Reiner leads this operation. He's been with the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Law Enforcement Division for eight years and works in Region 1. Hello. We'll be back in 15 minutes. Warden Reiner inspects the campsite. There's no question this party has had a campfire. He's going to leave a business card along with a note that fires are not allowed. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we don't allow campfires out there. People let them go and look how dry that. Look at that stuff, that's real quick. 
Forest fires occur naturally every year and can cost millions of dollars to fight. Ignited by lightning and fueled by dense vegetation, people's lives and property are threatened by this devastation. Man-made forest fires are generally created by carelessness or unattended campfire. If a person is found lighting a forest fire, they can be held accountable and may be responsible for paying the cost associated in fighting that fire. Up next on Warden's Tempers Flare. Oh, I asked you to stop filming. Is there a reason for that? It doesn't go on my permanent record, right? Preserving Montana's wild resources is a daunting task for 72 field game wardens in a state with over 145,000 square miles. Today, we've touched three regions, each with their own challenges. We're dealing with alcohol-related issues at a state parks fishing access site in Region 5. In Region 2, we're checking fishing licenses along the Blackfoot River Recreation Corridor. Why the clan is I don't know why the clan has to lie to me. I watched her with a fishing pole. And now, we join Warden Nathan Reiner in Region 1 on Flathead Lake dealing with campfire restrictions on an yeah, island well, uh, owned by the state of Montana. You can't have campfires out here. Campfires aren't allowed. You can camp, but you can't have any campfires. There's, it's too dry. Where did, is this, is this where your spot, camp spot is? Did you set the fire over there? No, no. Where was that? Where that come from? That wasn't me. That was from somebody previously. Were we here last night? That's your last night. Yes. All right, what you do? We'll write your written warning. Put the campfires on here. And I'll call that good. Okay. All right, and that way it's documented that you've been warned about having campfires. How you guys doing? Good. I'm Nathan with Fish Fly Fish Fly from Parks. And just letting you know, you can't have campfires out here on the island. You're more than welcome to camp out as long as you, you know, pick things up when you leave. Hey, can I ask you a personal question? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did the guy from uh, the, the tours of Big Fork call you? Oh, he, yeah, he called. Yeah, he threatened me this morning. I called the sheriff's department. Oh, did you? Yeah, he threatened to beat me up this morning. Oh, no kidding. Because he parked his boat where you did at 9 o'clock this morning when he could have parked over there and asked him to park down the beach. And he pretty much said, "It's public lands." I go, "Yeah, I know that, but there's a common courtesy about camping." Mm -hmm. And so he called you, and that's why you're out here. Just information I got to put in here. Uh, I call it. Stop filming, please. I don't. I don't want my butt. I don't want. I don't, I don't want, want, my I want to be butt. on the film. <laughs> uh, color eyes. Hazel. Wait. Uh, 180. Height. Really? Why are you seven. filming this? Yeah. Why are you filming this? I asked you to stop filming. Are you with them? Keep an outdoor channel. Outdoor channel? Good. It's between you and, uh, and us. It doesn't any record, it doesn't cost any money, it's just a written warning. Except with this. Except for it doesn't go on my permanent record, right? No, yeah, it's a warning. You're, you're filming this. Yeah, right. It's for true TV or something like that. Right? Right? Really? Yeah, it's for our outdoor channel. Is it really? Okay. Really? Let's check it out, huh? All right. Here. So it just has your information on it, and it just shows, and then on the bottom it just says it's a written warning right. for right. you know, unlawful fires. You're kidding so. me. Oh, you're right. Oh, it's now you know. Channel. I know, but what is this for? Just for the it's a written warning. Oh, you're all right. <laughs> you're all right. Smile for the camera. Hey, outdoor channel, here we I go. Know. Come on, here. here. Let's go shoot some deer this, here. this November. Here we go. Oh. 450 miles to the southeast, Warden Kevin Holland has come across a woman at a state-owned fishing access site who's had a little too much to drink. Okay, you want to come on back and we'll, we'll open this up and we'll see? Bring your keys with you too, would you? Give me your keys. Oh, they're over there. I'm gonna, let me see them. I'll hang on to them. I just got drunk here, sir. That's okay. My boyfriend was making me mad. Well, what do you do that for? Oh, I don't know. I'm pregnant. Well... Congratulations. I shouldn't be drinking, I know. Are you Yeah. Okay. You just hang on here a minute. You can go ahead and have a seat in the car. Okay. I'll hang on to these. Okay. I've been drinking a lot. And she's got a, a bag of pills that are 
or I mean a bottle of pills, prescription of some kind. So, <clears throat> and she's not gonna, I'm definitely not gonna let her drive. I'm gonna call the dispatch and make sure everything's okay with the proper person. Dispatch FG 511 on east. FG 511. 1029 on a female, last name is. Her ride is supposedly on the way, but Holla needs to make sure she doesn't have any outstanding warrants. I've got a, a lady who's telling me she's pregnant. She's smoking heavily. She's got a bottle full of pills and two of those big cans of beer that are empty. And she said she's here drinking because she got in a fight with her boyfriend. And she figured this would be a safe place to go. FG 511, clear to copy. That's never a good sign when they say prepare to copy. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. FG 511, clear to copy. That's never a good sign when they say prepare to copy. Go ahead. Subject is signal 92 next negative. That 10 for what was the, the first part? She is signal 90 for the officer caution, two engine negative. Nice. That uh, 10 for she's down at the north end of road 18 where it goes into the fishing access site. Uh, extremely intoxicated, and apparently we have somebody coming to pick her up. Um, she's in a car, she's by herself, but I did not see her drive. That means, uh, officer caution means there's, for some reason, there's uh, status in the um, database saying that she has either threatened an officer or assaulted an officer, and we're supposed to use additional caution when dealing with her. The fact that she's intoxicated obviously isn't you know, you know, to our benefit. Uh, I kept an eye on her purse when she was digging in there. I didn't see anything. And when I looked in her purse for ID, uh, I didn't see any weapons, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll stay back here and just make sure that she, you know, just keep an eye on her until her ride gets here. Uh, her keys for the car are on the hood of my truck, so I'll make sure she doesn't go driving off. So I'll go give this back to her, and um, you know, we'll be right back. Meanwhile, back on Flathead Lake, Warden Nathan Reiner has just made contact with a personal watercraft. How's it going? Hi. Good. Where are you guys' life jackets? Oh, yeah, I don't have any on me. They're back in the... All right, you need, you need life jackets on when you're driving a PWC. Okay, I didn't know that. Sorry. Can you watch you pull up here? Well, it, it's kind of a serious deal with the jet skis because okay. they're easily tipped over. Yeah. And if they were to tip over, and sometimes they, they slip away from you and blow away or whatever. Right. And, or you get you get thrown off and it goes on and you and uh, you can't get to it. So I'm um, going to write you a citation. Okay. Uh, and I was right one instead of two. Parks Warden Brian Schwartz is assisting Reiner and will write the ticket. Thank you. All right, Thank you guys. We'll give you life jackets to put on, and we'll follow you back, and then okay. we'll just get them from you when you get back to the okay. shore. How about that? I mean, it may make more sense. With safety a top priority, Warden Reiner gives this couple life jackets to ensure an uneventful trip back to the dock. All right, now we have it. It's a fair. It is. Here with the onion. Now we just had ran across a couple, a couple on a, a wave runner that uh, didn't have life jackets on. And in Montana, when you're when you're operating a personal watercraft, you need to have a life jacket. Uh, wear a life jacket all all times in operation. So, so we stopped them, and uh, Ryan wrote him a citation for uh, wearing a personal flotation device on a PWC, and. Uh, Gave them a loan, some loaner jackets so they get back to their dock. Greeted by family members, the couple returns the life preservers with a smile. I'm going to go over, to over here. Yeah, that's good. You can back it up. 
Okay. Here's for the little young man in the okay. his life jacket on over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice guy. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good, have a great reunion. The sun begins to fade in the western sky and Wardens Reiner and Schwartz head across the lake. Guided by radar in the dark of night, they come across a very dangerous situation, a sailboat traveling across the lake with no lights. intoxicated woman cooperate with Warden Hobbs. Well, I hear you. Hear from you pretty soon. I'm coming in after you, so. Okay, well, that's good. Just make sure you come out, because I don't want to come in after you. <laughs> Along the banks of the Yellowstone River near Billings, Montana, Warden Kevin Holland has just been informed by dispatch the woman being questioned has previously threatened law enforcement officers. He must use extreme caution. What are you gonna do, put your purse in the trunk? Maybe, well, here, I better take the rest of the beer. I don't think you need any more beer tonight. It's a, I, I just drank one is all. Well, there's two of them in there that are I'm empty. I'm pregnant. So that's, what? That's my boyfriend. Well, he drank. Yeah, this. it's his boyfriend, huh? Can I go in the river and pee or not? No, I'll let you go over in the grass. I don't want you to fall in the water and drown. Oh, God. Well, that's what I'm going to say. I already got one dead guy yesterday that drowned. Really? Yeah. In Lake Elmo. Lake Elmo. He dead or in heck. I forgot. He went in the water and drowned. Put right here, one foot. No. Please. You're going to drown. I don't want to come no, in and I'm get. Not gonna it's drown. not going to be two for two. I don't want to get two people in two days. <laughs> I gotta go in the grass where you're at behind the street. Yeah, leave your purse here. You don't need your purse to pee. If I don't hear you hear from you pretty soon, I'm coming in after you, so. Okay, well that's good. Just make sure you come out. Because I don't want to come in after you. <laughs> she goes down, I got the camera. You get her, you got shorts on. She had to go relieve herself, and I told her not to go in the river because I don't want to get two dead bodies in two days. But um, she's, you know, I think she's probably going to be okay. I mean, obviously she's, she's extremely intoxicated, but um, I've come across people like this that have been intoxicated, and it turns into a real fight too. So um, I think this is a happy drunk. I'm okay with happy drunks. People who are not happy drunks, don't, that's not fun. And quite honestly, because of my size, they think, you know, the bigger they are, the more fun it's going to be. And that's what some of these drunks want. They, they find a big, tall guy like me, and they want to go for it. There's somebody coming now. This might be their ride. So I don't know if this will, hopefully it'll be them. I got to make sure she's still splashing around down there. Hey, you here for Well, she's down. She's down for the count. Keep your head up. Don't go under. In the huh? She's been a pain in the for quite a while. Well, she's I, drunk, ain't she? Oh, she's drunk her in the Can't hardly really stand. 
she's got a bottle of pills, she says they're cramp medicine. She's got two empty bottles or big cans in there. She just picked up two more. So she's I'm almost tempted to head to take her. I don't know what I can take her to jail for. Public intoxication. Well I don't I think that works in the city, but I don't think that works if she was disorderly I could do something, but she's not disorderly. I was parked. Uh, you want to get the beer out of her purse, or you want her to take I'm it? I'm drunk when I park. I don't want no and alcohol on a period parked. in my vehicle. Well, then I, I got to get the beer then. Okay, yep. no, I'll put it in my car. She's, I mean, she's she's I, over 18. I can't. I, I used to be a medical marijuana caregiver. Yeah. And I helped her out as her caregiver. I was always giving her her product, her medicine, for sure, me, all the time. Okay. And I'm fed up with her. Well, she's pregnant like she says she is, being yeah. drunk and smoking and, you know, taking yeah. the medical marijuana, she probably could do a few. Well, I've cut her off. Good. Period. Because I won't put up with that with any of my patients. Good. Well, that's I've good. I've cut her off completely. Because Excellent. I'm... Than to do this. Yeah? I mean, she's... I do. I'll, I'll give you the keys yeah. and you can... <laughs> yeah. You can't hardly stand. The windows are down. So you don't want to pull them up. I need those beer. You want me to take the beer or you want to just leave them in the car? How about, how about we have the wife drive this vehicle home? I'm okay with that. I'm, that's good. You have one? Yeah. She's got okay. I don't need to see it. I'll take your word for it. I'm going to put her in our vehicle. Uh, you might want to leave her there because she's all soaking wet. I only had one beer. You are drunk. No, I only had one beer. Get in the, the jimmy. I didn't want to drive because I had one beer. You get, can't even stand Get up. in the jimmy. The wife's going to bring your car home for you. Man. You want me to take them other beers or you want to take them? I don't care. I did. You're okay? I'm okay. I, I appreciate that. Okay. I'm sorry about the problem. Hey, that's... Do what you can to, you know, get it right for her. She's... Jimmy. Okay. Well, take care, man. Oh, yeah. See you later. Good luck. Thanks for coming out and getting it. I appreciate oh, it. Gotcha. Here, I got it. I got it. That's right, otherwise it's against the law for having an open container. <laughs> That's right. That's the drink of choice. That's good that the neighbors come down to help out. I mean, that, that's good stuff when you have friends that will come out and do that for you. I can't do anything about her drinking and driving because I didn't see her drive. She was parked here. So, you know, there's no laws that I see that were broken. Okay, we'll jump out of the way. We're quick. We're quick. We'll get out of the way. Take care. <laughs> There's some happy people. <laughs> That's the way it is sometimes. Sometimes it's a fight. Sometimes you just kind of smile and go with the flow. You're watching Wardens only on Outdoor Channel. No wake zones are made to protect property, including shorelines, boats, and docks. The Swan River feeds into Flathead Lake in Big Four, and Wardens Nathan Reiner and Brian Schwartz are going to have a chat with these water enthusiasts. I just want to talk to you real quick about um, this is this is a no wake zone in here. Oh, yeah. Well, when you uh, wake is defined as when you're making white water with your boat. I mean, it, you can take idle, you can idle up in through here and stuff like that. But when you're whipping around like that, no, that and that stuff that we get complaints about too. All right. So. Um, if we don't do that sometimes, we literally flip right now with that. Yeah, there's water right there. Yeah. I tried to turn around yesterday without any gas and it literally flipped me over. 
cat size. We understand we have a house right there. We're not arguing. You know? Yeah. It's right on the corner. You don't have to give it quite too much. Huh? You don't have to give it quite that much. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, what I'm looking for is you got the numbers on your boat and stuff like that? You know what? If you want to. Not even sure. Uh, no wake and also the, you're not in, you need to have a, Get your numbers on there, and uh, you get the number off of this. Right. Um, Probably you know should what? get a plastic bag. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the most important part is, is to get your numbers in the boat. So if somewhere to happen, we find this boat floating right. on the, the yeah. lake, we can run it like a license plate. It's the same yeah, deal exactly. as, your, as your vehicles. You need to have licenses on them. So totally understandable. Um, you need to have your numbers on, and then you also you make sure you get your new validation decal, which right. is the orange one. Yeah. You can see it on yeah. our boat there. Uh, and that's good for three years. Oh, all right. Wardens Reiner and Schwartz write a couple of written warnings. So your information is on the top. Um, this is just a written warning. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and then on the bottom, it's for you know operating in a no wake zone. Um, and specifically, it's, it's not in here in my book here, but there's a specific rule for this area. And then um, and then also just not having the decals on the boat. But okay. both of them are citable offenses. But yeah, so don't injure, ruin your fourth. So it's not gonna, no, not killing anybody. But we gotta do it. So. What's your name? Brian. Donnie. Nice to meet Good you, Donnie. I think I met you before, actually. Really? <laughs> All right, guys. All right. All righty. Take care. Yep. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to make that up. A warden's underlying mission is to keep everyone safe. A combination of alcohol and boating have the potential to cause accidents, death, and bodily harm with little or no warning. Practicing water safety and abiding by the rules keep people out of harm's way. And here's two more jet skiers breaking the no wake rule. How's it going? Pretty good. Can you pull up over here? Yeah. Can you get under the bridge, just kind of get through, and then just keep it at a low idle when you're coming out. All right. If there's any white water coming out the back, that, uh -oh. just, that's the definition of white, of, uh, that's the definite part of the definition so just, of white. So. What we're telling you guys is that uh, you have to do, give it a little bit of gas underneath the, the, the pillar there. Uh, but once you get past that pillar, you, you, it's got to be a no wake speed. That's why they have the no wake buoys on both ends. So give you, you yeah, you've got the current now, so give it a little gas so you don't run into the bridge or into the pillar. But uh, once you get past that narrow section, you got to slow down and do a no wake speed. All right. Yep. So yeah, from there all the way in, you, see, you have to keep it below a wake speed. Yep. That's right. And then if you drive inside the marina and all, you can't, you have to just keep it slow too. So. All right. All right. Yep.